that rendition of the National Anthem. We are on the way here. We welcome you inside Willard Stadium on the beautiful campus of High Point University. Good afternoon, everybody. John Gruber taking you through this one, and it should be a good one here between the 4 and 2 NC Central Eagles and the 2 and 2 High Point Panthers. Unfortunately, my color commentator was not able to be here today, and I certainly hope everything's well with him. But for High Point, they need this win. They're 2-2 two two to start off the season. They had a rough home opener last time out against UNCG, losing 6-2. One thing for the Panthers that's going to be key in this game, they have to stop giving up the first inning runs. They gave up 18 over their first few games, and that was pretty much the difference last time out against the Spartans. 6-2 to two was the final, and four of those runs came in the first two innings. So that's something that the Panthers, I'm sure, are looking to clean up as we get set for baseball here this afternoon against the NC Central Eagles. They're coming off a doubleheader split on Sunday against the Delaware State Hornets, 1-1, one one as they won the first game of that set, and they fell in the nightcap. So before we get to the first pitch, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Eagles. Carter Williams is starting off. He'll lead off in left field. Corey Joyce at shortstop, bat second. Hitting third, ba Vinny Bailey, the first baseman, designated hitter in cleanup. Josh Brammel, Trey Maslin is hitting fifth. Brad Mize is sixth. Miles Costin is at third base, he'll bat seventh. Hitting eighth and catching Timmy Fishfock and Bryson Hernandez rounds out the lineup in right field. And on the mound for the Panthers, it is right-hander Andrew Gottfried had a struggle his last time out, 0-1 so far with an ERA close to 11. Okay. Digging in from the left side of the plate, it is going to be Connor Dunbar, or check that Carter Williams rather for the Eagles, and we're just about set for action. First pitch in from Godfrey is out in the outside corner, and with that we are underway from Willard Stadium. For the Panthers, they have their third baseman playing towards the cutout at third, Everybody else, normal depth. Next pitch from Godfrey is down and low inside at the shoelaces, and the count is even. Williams on the season hitting 333. He has one home run, and he's driven in three on the year. The 1-1 one -one comes home. Swung on and missed. Got him to chase. Nice pitch down and away, and the count quickly 1-2. Again, John Caruba welcome you inside Willard Stadium here at High Point University. It should be a good game between these two rivals. It'll be a 1-2 from Godfrey. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. He got him to chase. High and away with the fastball. Great start here for Godfrey. Just four pitches, and he sets down the leadoff hitter, Williams. And that certainly is key, as Williams has a lot of power, and he's an on-base machine, keeping him off was key to start here. So one gone and nobody on. Here's another person that knows how to get on base. Corey Joyce, the junior infielder. Stands in from the right side. Godfrey goes into the line first pitch. Is letter high across the inside corner and the count nothing in one. Umpires for this afternoon's game. Randall Doolin is behind home plate. Lindy Hall at first and Jamie Payne over at third. Next pitch is waved at, getting them to chase the off-speed here early as that was down and away, and the count quickly, nothing in two. Joyce on the season, hitting only 176. He does have a triple, though, and a couple runs driven in. Joyce digging in from the right side of the plate. Godfrey rocks, kicks, delivers. Swung out and missed, and was it a foul tip? It was not. He missed it, so he is tagged out promptly by the catcher. So great start here for Godfrey, racking up the Ks. The first two hitters have been set down on punch outs. Two away and nobody on. This will leave it to Vinny Bailey. The junior first baseman is he'll stand in from the left side of the plate. Once again, high point bringing their third baseman in. Very shallow right near the cutoff at the third base back. And the line goes Godfrey. First pitch is waved at and missed again, high and away. He got him to chase, 0-1. 
right now. Good stuff here from Godfrey. Appears to have very good command of the strike zone and setting up his breaking ball a lot with the fastball. Next pitch is swung on and hit on the ground right side. Routine play on the first, and it's wide. And the first baseman cannot handle it. So reaching safely, we'll see how they score it. That looked to be a routine play. So it'll probably be an error, but we'll see. In any event, the inning continues on for the Eagles. They have a runner on first with two men out. They don't have a hit. He fielded it cleanly on that play. But it looked like the throw maybe just yanked a little bit too low. And the Panthers' first baseman, J.J. Woodard, couldn't handle it. So a two gone and a runner still on first. They do score it officially an error. So a two gone and a runner on. The inning continues for the Eagles. First pitch is on the outside corner right over the black. And the count nothing and one. Josh Bramlow is the new hitter. And he has really struggled in the early going, batting under 100 at 071. One home run and three knocked in. As it'll be an 01. And now they throw back over to first to check on the runner. Bailey in safely with the right hand slide. Again, just underway here from Willard Stadium in the top of the first. Two men out, no score. Eagles at the plate, and they have a runner on first. That's Bailey. Godfried from the windup, the pitch is swung on and fouled back off the glove of the catcher, and the count is now 0-2. So Godfried with yet another two-strike count. He got each of his three previous hitters into it. He struck out the first two, and it looked like he was out of the inning until the error by the Panthers' second baseman, Trent Harris. Ding in from the left side. It's Bramble. Again, he's going to await an 0-2 offering. In the dirt down and in, runner going for second throw is in time. That is a great play there. As the catcher, you gotta give a lot of credit to Brian Rawl, and he's making his first start this season. Well, talk about making a big impact. He got up, delivered a strike right over the second base bag, and they applied the tag, and just like that, the Eagles are gone here in the first. So for the Eagles, no runs, no hits, one error, and because of the caught stealing, no one left on. We'll take this to the home half of the first. Still scoreless from Willard Stadium here in High Point. Again, it's the Eagles, no score, and the Panthers coming to the plate. We will keep it right here, though, and as we hit the bottom of the first, let's go over the Panthers' starting lineup. Leading off and playing shortstop, it is Connor Dunbar. Tanner Wells in right field hits second. Batting third and manning the hot corner, Travis Holt. Daniel Milwee is a designated hitter. He'll bat cleanup. J.J. Woodard hitting fifth and playing first base. Sam Zayachek is in left field. He'll bat sixth, hitting seventh and playing center field. Ryan Russell, Trent Harris is at second base, hitting eighth. And as we mentioned, Brian Rawl making his debut. Already a caught stealing in this game. He'll hit ninth. And they will go to work against Brendan Bell, the right-hander for the Eagles. So for high point, they were able to get out of that first inning without giving up any runs, which we mentioned in the open was going to be critical to success. And they were able to do it. Now let's see if they can turn the tide and jump on NC Central pitching early. They'll certainly hope that they can. For Dunbar, the leadoff hitter, he has struggled to this point in the season, hitting only 214, and he's yet to drive in a run or hit a homer. This Panthers team has lost a lot of offensive talent from last year, a lot of freshmen and sophomore, and we'll see if they can find a way to bust out of their early offensive yeah, funk and come through here in this one against NC Central. Again, John Kruba taking you through this one. Thank you for tuning in. On this Tuesday afternoon, a great day for baseball here at Willard Stadium. Just do that for now. Dunbar is going to dig in from the left side of the plate against the righty throwing bow. As we get going here in the bottom of the first, still no score between NC Central and the Panthers. Dunbar digging in left side of the plate. He'll await the first pitch. It is on the outside edge, getting the call that time was the pitcher Bell from the home plate umpire, Randall Doolin. 
Cal 0-1 quickly here to Dunbar. Toe on the rubber from the first base side. NC Central with two infielders on the right. Next pitch is swung on, hit in the air to straightaway left, not all that deep. Settling underneath it, making the routine catch that time for the Eagles is Carter Williams. Puts it away, one gone. You can see what Dunbar was trying to do there, almost an opposite field type swing, trying to pull it to the left center gap, but it hung up just long enough for Williams to get there and make the play. One gone here is Tanner Wells standing in right side. Hitting 154 on the season. First pitch is right over the heart of the plate. And the count 0-1. Wells to go along with the 154 average. No home runs and no RBI. We mentioned this Panthers team has yet to hit a home run this season. Next pitch well off the plate inside. Forcing Wells to back off the plate there. And the count is even 1-1. One and one. Now the Eagles defense after the first out, they align back to normal position at all four infield spots. 1-1 one, one is swung on and missed. He was trying to golf that one onto Lexington Avenue. Instead, the count is one and two. For Wells, his slugging percentage so far not that great, 308, and an on-base percentage of 214. Next pitch is a check swing foul ball as it goes off to our right up here in the press box. Well foul. And the count remains one and two. For Wells, he's a part of this high point lineup that's looking to make up some of the production they lost due to a lot of players graduating. The one two is on the inside corner. That was a late call that time from the home plate umpire Randall Doolin, but he does give it to him on the inside corner at the letters. Two up, two down. So far in just eight pitches for Brandon Bow. So a good start here for both pitchers, and we'll see if the Eagles can get out of this with a 1-2-3 inning. Two gone, nobody on. Here is Travis Holt coming to the plate. He'll stand in right side. First pitch is right over the heart of the plate, knee high, 0-1. Travis Holt, a little bit of the old Jeff Bagwell type stance as they tow the rubber first base side. And now he'll step out for a moment. We're in the home half of the first inning, just underway from Willard Stadium, and we're still scoreless between the Eagles and the Panthers. Next pitch is high and outside, good take, and the count even, one and one. Holt has been one of the few bright spots in this Panthers offense, hitting a sparkling 357 so far on the year, but only one RBI. Next pitch is swung on and a sky high pop up, but this is gonna go foul. And the count now is going to be one and one here. Getting back to hold, he's had a couple of big days despite only having the one run batted in. A slaying percentage of 429 and an OBP of 357. As it'll be a one one. Swung on, slow chopper, first base side of the mound. Bell underhanded flip to first, plenty of time, and that'll do it for high point here in the home half of the first. A nice easy one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on. Through one full here at Willard Stadium, no score, Panthers and Eagles. Back here at Willard Stadium on the campus of High Point University. Still no score between NC Central and High Point. But we do have something, if you're a Panthers fan, to be concerned as starter Andrew Godfried is no longer in the game. It's actually now Harrison Smith, number 33. Harrison Smith is on the mound. We'll see if we get any information about Godfried. We will pass it along to you. He looked okay pitching in the first inning. In fact, he got two strikeouts, a ground out, and then a fly out. So it didn't really look like there was a whole lot wrong, but he is out of the game, and it's now Harrison Smith in for the Panthers. As we begin the top half of the second inning, after the caught stealing, it will be for NC Central. It'll be the middle part of their lineup as Bramble gonna get another chance at the plate. He was hitting when Vinny Bailey got caught stealing at second base, so it'll be four, five, and six in the NC Central lineup. Brammel, Maslin, and Mize. Brammel going to dig in from the left side of the plate. He gets a whole new A-B with a fresh count. And nobody on base as we start the top half of inning number two. 
Again, if we get more information about Gottfried, we will pass it along to you as we start top half inning number two. No score. Bramble digging in from the left side. They play the third baseman in. First pitch is on the outside edge. Gets the first strike from Randall Doolin. Nothing in one. Meanwhile, for a high point, their third baseman is holding. They have been alternating playing him in and at regular depth. Next pitch is swung on, and that is smoked, but well fouled down the left field line as he fouls it off the opposite way. Count quickly, 0-2. For Bramall on the season, again, only hitting 071. That is not the average I'm sure he envisioned coming into this season as he stands it again for the left side, close to the plate. Smith delivers. Swung on, punched out, left side of the infield. Nice play there on the run, as it was no problem that time for Travis Holt. One away in just three pitches here in the Eagles, half of the second. So for Smith, it took him just four pitches to set down the designated hitter for the Eagles, Josh Bramel, and now he's going to have to deal with another challenge, Trey Maslett. He'll stand in from the right side of the plate. From the first base side of the rubber, here comes the first pitch from Smith. Swung on and missed as he went to the breaking pitch that time down and away, 0-1. For Maslin, so far on the season, very good stats, hitting 316. He has six RBIs and that leads the Eagles. Next pitch swung on, hit in the air to straightaway right. Coming in a couple of steps, then backing up to make the catch easily is Tanner Wells, two up, two down. It's taken them all of five pitches for Smith to dispatch the first two hitters. We mentioned about the problems High Point has had in the first two innings. They're non-existent so far here this afternoon as they're one out away from clearing the first six outs of the game without surrendering a run. Two away and nobody on. Here is Brad Mize. First pitch swung on and fouls it back as he was just a hair early and the count is quickly 0-1. John Kruba taking you through this one. Thank you for tuning in. A beautiful day for baseball here at Willard Stadium on the campus of High Point University. As it'll be an 0-1. Upstairs and inside for some to back off the plate. The count is even, 1-1. One one. For Maslin, he also has three walks so far on the year. Only five strikeouts and an on-base percentage of 480. Next pitch is off the plate a bit high and away, and the count two and one. And for Maslin, he is a notable offensive player, certainly does help provide a spark for the Eagles on offense. Maslin digs in again from the left side. Next pitch is swung on and hit in the air to straightaway center, giving chase and running it down towards the left center field gap. That time a great play by Ryan Russell, and that'll end the inning here for the Eagles. So a nice easy one, two, three inning, and we are still scoreless as we hit the home half inning number two. Home half of inning number two from Willard Stadium on the campus of High Point University. In the bottom of the second, we are still scoreless between the Panthers and the Eagles. So for high point, it will be four, five, and six in the Panther lineup, starting with the DH, Daniel Milwe. Standing in from the right side of the plate. First pitch, he squares the bun, and it's going to kick foul up the third baseline, 0-1. As Bell had a relatively easy 1-2-3 bottom of the first, we'll see if he can repeat that here in the second. For high point, they're just looking to get any sort of offensive consistency going. We've detailed their struggles to this point, and they certainly had struggles again in the first. Milway could certainly set the table, though. He's hitting 385 on the season. He'll dig in again from the right side of the plate. It'll be an 0-1. It is upstairs and high at the letters in the count even. One ball, one strike. Following Milway, it'll be Woodard and Zayacek. If anyone gets on, then it'll be the number eight hitter, Ryan Russell. The 1-1, swung on and missed a hack at a nice pitch that time, and the count 1-2. and two. As some shadows beginning to just settle in over the field here at Willard Stadium, still a great afternoon for baseball, and we're thankful that you've tuned in here on ESPN+. Next pitch is swung on and missed. He got him, 
He got him to chase another pitch well off the plate. Almost had a 12 to six like feel on that. And one away here in the Panthers, half of the second. One away and nobody on. Here is J.J. Woodard coming to the plate. If you're just tuning in for High Point, one thing to be concerned about, their starting pitcher, Andrew Gottfried, had to exit the game after one inning. Harrison Smith pitched the top of the second. And again, once we get a word on Gottfried, we'll pass it along to you as the first pitch came in. And no, that was a warm-up pitch as they were switching hitters there for a second. That fooled almost everybody in the stadium, including myself. Here in the bottom of the second, still scoreless between the Eagles and the Panthers. Bell from the first base side. Now the first pitch is off the plate, down and away, 1-0. and Woodard on the season, hitting 364. He has two driven in on the season and a slugging percentage also of 364. Ding in from the right side again. Pitch is swung on, smoked, and that'll get on into left field. And that officially is our first hit of the afternoon for either side. So J.J. Woodard gets on base, and the Panthers now maybe have some life. They have a runner on first with one gone. That time he went up there looking for a pitch. He got it, and a nice job to just pull it in the hole between shortstop and third as it found the left field grass for the one-out single. So a runner on first, one gone. Here is Sam Zayacek. He stands in for the left side of the plate. Working from the stretch for the first time today is Bell. First pitch is right over the heart of the plate, and the count 0-1. On the season, Zayacek hitting 400. He was named the Big South Player of the Week as he was second on the team with four RBIs during the week of February 11th through the 18th. Zayacek digs in left side. Next pitch is well off the plate high and outside. And the count is even. It's funny, in high school he was dubbed the jack of all trades as he certainly is very versatile. He can play a bunch of different positions. He's certainly been one of the Panthers' best candidates on offense so far here in the early going. Zayacek digs in again from the left side. It'll be a 1-1. Swung on, hit high in the air, well struck to straightaway left field. A nice over the shoulder grab that time. Good defense there by North Carolina Central. Retreating back to first is Woodard, and they now have a runner on first with two men out. So Zayacek gave it a ride, displaying some of his opposite field power, but a nice running catch snag made that time by the Eagles left fielder. That's Carter Williams for the second out. Two away and a runner still remaining on first. Here is Ryan Russell coming to the plate. The center fielder batting 400 on the year. First pitch coming from Bell. It is out in the inside edge. Letter high in the count 0-1. Randall Doolin is our home plate umpire. Again, Lindy Hall over at first. And Jamie Payne is the third base ump. As we're in the bottom half of inning number two, still scoreless between North Carolina Central and High Point. Next pitch is swung on and hit high in the air into foul territory down the right field line, and no one's going to get there as it's going to go well out of play. Count quickly, nothing and two. So for High Point on the box score, no runs, one hit and one error for North Carolina Central to this point. All zeros, no runs, no hits, and no errors. Yep, Taking a lead off of first for high point, it's Woodard being held on closely over at first by Bailey. Next pitch is in tight upstairs, trying to get him to swing. Wasn't happening in the count, one and two. For Ryan Russell, despite having only one RBI, he certainly has been showing signs lately of starting to potentially come out of the funk, and at this point, Anyone that can start contributing is huge for high point. Next pitch, slow roller, left side of the infield. Throw is high. It gets over the first baseman's head, and that's going to allow Russell to move up to second. Meanwhile, going all the way to third on that play is Woodard, and high point now is set up. They have runners on second and third with two men out. That was a case. He tried to barehand it, but rushed the throw, 
I think he had a little more time than maybe he thought that he did. That was Miles Costin, the third baseman for the Eagles. And once it went over the first baseman's head, that's Vinny Bailey. No chance that that allowed High Point to get up to second and third with two men out. So here is Trent Harris standing in from the right side of the plate. An early RBI opportunity for the Panthers. We'll see if they can strike first. Bell working from the first base side of the rubber. First pitch is upstairs inside. Forced them to jump off the plate. One and up. By the way, they do officially score that an E5 on the third baseman. As Costin's throw was just too high. No chance for the first baseman, Vinny Bailey, to get it. It'll be a 1-0 as Harris stands in from the right side, also hitting 143 on the season. Pitch is swung on and missed. That was a weak hack. Handcuffed him with a fastball letter high, and the count is even 1-1. One one. Again in the bottom of the second inning, still no score between North Carolina Central and High Point. Harris digging back in from the right side. To this point, still looking for his first RBI on the season. Next pitch, almost hits him again. Boy, they're really coming in with that fastball. They've almost clipped him a couple of times, and the count is now 2-1 and one for Harris. He's in a good hitter's count, looking to do something. The good news, especially with two outs, a single would easily give High Point not only one run, it would probably most likely give him two runs. The 2-1 is on the outside edge, and the count is even 2-2. Two and two. For Harris, we'll see if he can come through here. His on-base percentage overall in the season, 250. For high point, one of the other things, they've really struggled with runners in scoring position. We'll see if they can break out of that right here. They have two men on with two men out. 2-2 two, two is swung on, and that'll fall in the left field for a base hit. One run scores. They're sending Russell to the plate. He'll score standing up as the throw is cut off by the second baseman and standing on first with a big, big two out, two RBI single. It's Trent Harris, the second baseman, and in the home half of inning number two, high point strikes first, Panthers two, and the Eagles no score. Nice job just going with the pitch that time. He sort of fisted it off and got it into left field, and that's all he needed to do to bring in two runs. So here is Brian Rawl, the catcher, as they throw over to first to quickly check on Harris, but he wasn't going anywhere. So for Harris on the season, RBIs number two and three, and high point with a two-run lead. So he takes his lead off first. Standing in raw, first pitch, well off the plate, down and away, and the count 1-0. Boy, the Panthers really, really needed that hit. They were really struggling coming off that game against the Spartans. This certainly can help turn the tide with them so far here this afternoon. Ding back in from the right side, it's raw. And now they throw back over to first, and they almost pick him off. However, Harris got back in with the right hand just before the tag was applied by Bailey. In the bottom of the second, two runs now for high point on two hits and one error for NC Central. No hits and no runs and one error. Ding back in from the right side. It's the catcher, Rawl. As we mentioned, making his first start for high point this season. Next pitch is off the plate, just a bit high, and the count 2-0. Borderline call that time. The pitcher Bell didn't get it. Going to have to work a little bit harder. Runner on first with two down here in the bottom of the second inning. Standing in from the right side again. Rawl, he'll await a 2-0 offering. Runner goes inside throw to second. Not in time and low. That time just a good play by the Eagles second baseman Trey Maslin to get in front of it and field it. But that is an easy stolen base that time for Harris. And so here we go. Now we've got another runner in scoring position for high point. With two down now, he is in scoring position. Again, significant. One more base hit, and high point probably takes a three-run lead. As we just saw the speed that Harris has out of the eighth spot. And now they throw back over to second. However, Russell gets back in, standing up. Check that Harris is the one that got back in. You can see Rawl really trying to keep him close. He knows the bigger the lead, especially with two outs. Any sort of single would certainly make it easier for him to score on a potential play at the plate. 
Pitch is swung on, hit on the ground to third base, across the diamond, plenty of time, and that'll do it for High Point here in the second, but two big runs on a couple of hits and a very costly two-out error, and after two, High Point leads 2-0 thanks to the two RBI single. Back here at Willard Stadium on the campus of High Point University on what has been a very beautiful afternoon for baseball, and High Point right now, they're loving life, up by two, two to nothing over the NC Central Eagles, thanks to a two-out, two-RBI single by Trent Harris. And as we go to the top of the third, Harrison Smith, who came in on relief for Andrew Gottfried, back in the second inning, he remains in the game, hoping to have another strong inning, especially now protecting a two-run edge. For the Eagles in the inning coming up, it will be the bottom third of their lineup, seven, eight, and nine, beginning with Miles Costin, the third baseman, Timmy Fishvoit, and then Bryson Hernandez. And for Costin, since he's the one that made that costly error back in the home half inning number two that kept that inning going, that allowed two runs to come to the plate, I'm sure he'd like to atone for his error right here as he leads off the top half of inning number three. Costin stands in from the right side of the plate. Costin so far 250 on the season. He's driven in a run and is yet to hit one yard. Smith going into the windup first pitch is letter high across the inside corner. Count 0 and 1. So for the Eagles, they're looking to bounce back. They had a rough bottom of the second inning in which they surrendered two runs. For high point, that's exactly what they needed as the next pitch check swing, but it's called a strike anyway across the inside corner, knee high, 0-2. For the Panthers, they had had so many struggles in the first couple innings, but in this game, it's been the exact opposite, and high point with a two-run lead. Next pitch is swung on and just getting a piece to stay alive that time, and fouling it off for the Eagles is Costin, Count Holtz. In the bottom of the second on the scoreboard, two runs, two hits, one error for the Panthers against no runs, no hits, and one error for the Eagles. Next pitch from Smith is swung on and missed. He got him, blew it right by him. Reached back for a little something extra on that pitch, did Smith. One gone here in the top of the third. Again, just a very good sequence of pitches, and he was able to finish him off with the tantalizing fastball up in the zone. One away, no one on. Here is Timmy Fishfot joining in from the left side of the plate. First pitch is just off the plate, maybe a bit high and away, and the count 1-0. and oh. On the season, he's hitting 250. He has a 417 slugging percentage and an RBI on the season. Next pitch is swung on, and he rakes that one well, fouled down the left field line. He's quickly down in the count, or check that, that'll leave in the count up at a ball and a strike. We're in the top of the third, one gone, and nobody on base. Eagles trailing 2-0. Next pitch is just off the plate, a little bit outside. Boy, that was a borderline call. 2-1 and one as it goes in the favor of the hitter, Fishfot, 2-1. and one. He'll stand back in from the left side. Smith ready to go, the 2-1 pitch. Well off the plate, high and away in the count now quickly, 3-1. This is exactly what NC Central needs to do. They had a tough last half inning. They got to start working the count, maybe make Smith throw some pitches. For high point, you're already in the bullpen, so the more they can work up these pitch counts for the Eagles, the better chance they have of getting back in this contest. It'll be a 3-1 home. It is on the outside corner, and the count back to full. Boy, the hitter Fishfot thought that was ball four. He was ready to start heading down to first. Instead, it's three and two. Fish fought again from the left side of the plate. Payoff pitch, swung on, and another sky-high foul ball. This will go well out of play. Down the left field line, we'll do it over on a full count. If you're just tuning in, John Karuba taking you through this one. Thank you for tuning in. For high point, it is Harrison Smith on the mound. He came in after Andrew Godfrey suddenly departed the game after the first. Next pitch is on the outside corner, in there, called strike three. And for Fishvot, he went from thinking he had a free pass. Instead, he's gone on the K, two gone. 
So a two gone and no one on here is Bryson Hernandez coming to the plate. Standing in left side. High point ready to go. First pitch from Smith is swung on and shot foul up the first baseline. Count 0-1. For high point, there are two runs coming in the bottom of the second on a costly two-out throwing error by the third baseman, Miles Costin. That allowed high point to get runners on second and third. And thanks to that two-out single in the hole on the left side of the infield, HPU up by two. Next pitch from Smith is off the inside corner, just a little bit low. Count one and one. For the Eagles, they've been pretty dynamic offensively, although they kind of ran into a wall in the second game of their double header that they played against Delaware State. And so far, they haven't put much of a challenge against this high point pitching staff down by a couple of runs. Next pitch check, swing, did he go? No, he did not on the appeal, said the third base umpire Jamie Payne. Count one and one. Again, we're in the top of the third inning, and our score, two nothing high point. Smith ready to go, come set, pitch swung on, grounded back up the middle, that'll get on through to center field. And for the Eagles, they have their first hit of the afternoon. Stopping at first, it is Bryson Hernandez. So for the Eagles, they now have a runner on with two men out. Good job just going with the pitch that time by Hernandez. It was a fastball, more middle in. He just took it and went right back up the middle with it. For the Eagles, they now have a runner on first and two men gone. So back to the top of the lineup card we go to Carter Williams, always an offensive threat for the Eagles. He has a very good slugging percentage so far this year at 571. He certainly has the power to tie the game with one swing. First pitch well off the plate high and away, went to the breaking pitch, 1-0. Taking his lead off of first for the Eagles, it is Hernandez. He's being guarded closely by Woodard. Ding it again for the left side, Williams. And now they throw back over to first and just getting back in with the right hand that time was Hernandez. High point thought they had a chance to pick him off there as it looked like he got caught leaning just a little bit. It'll be a 1-0 delivery home from Smith. It is on the outside edge. Getting the call that time was the pitcher Smith and the count is even, 1-1. One Top half inning number three, high point leading this by two over the Eagles. Hernandez on the season hitting 250, and Williams at the plate currently at 333. And now they throw back over to first again, and again getting back in safely was Williams well ahead of the tag. Temperature 60 degrees currently right now here in high point in the top of the third. Perfect baseball weather, high point up by two. Runner taking his lead off first, next pitch is swung on and hit high in the air down the left field line. Again, this is gonna go well foul. And the count now is going to be one and two on the leadoff hitter, Williams. For Williams, he was also a postseason third team all MEAC selection in 2018. He racked up 13 doubles, five triples and six homers from the leadoff spot. So he's someone that certainly, when you think of table setters, that's him. With two gone, a runner off first. Pitch is swung on, hit on the ground. Third baseman, across the diamond, guns out. Williams, that is a good play right there. Good strong arm from high point in there. Third baseman Holt, plenty of time to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man left stranded. Home after the third, two nothing high point. Back here on the campus of High Point University, Willard Stadium, home half inning number three. High Point with a two-run lead, two to nothing. The big blow so far in this game, a two RBI single with two out to left field off the bat of Trent Harris. RBI's number two and three on the season for him. He gives High Point the two-run lead. And as we go to the bottom of the third, it goes back to the top third of the order for the Panthers, Dunbar, Wells, and Holt. Dunbar digging in from the left side. Bell ready to go. First pitch is swung on and grounded. Foul outside the first base bag. Count 0-1. On the scoreboard, 2-2-1 for high point. 
all one and one for the Eagles. For High Point, two and two overall this season, have yet to play a conference game, but for the Panthers, after the way their home opener left them feeling, to get a win in this one would be very, very important, especially early in the season. Next pitch is off the plate, letter high, and the count even, one and one. That time tried to go up and in, but that one just a little too far inside. Dunbar ding it again from the left side of the plate. Next pitch, swung on and fouls it back to the screen behind the plate, one and two. For high points, still leading by two here, Brandon Bell working in his third inning for the Eagles. Trying to do whatever he can to keep high point off the board with his offense struggling and already down by a couple of runs. Dunbar from the left side, next pitch is off the plate, down and away, and the count is even, two and two. Good eye that time from Dunbar, that is something that Bell likes to do. He likes to set up people for that breaking pitch, but Dunbar able to lay off. Again, it's gonna be a two-two. Bell from the first base side of the rubber is on the outside corner, strike three. Boy, Doolin does certainly like to hesitate before making his calls. A little bit of dramatic effect, but he's gone on strikes as Dunbar, one away. So here comes Tanner Wells stepping to the plate, standing in from the right side. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, they're playing everybody straight up at all four infield spots as he waves at that first pitch, trying to belt that one way out of here in the count, 0-1. 2-0 high point our score for Brendan Bell. He is again in his third inning of work. It'll be an 0-1 delivery. Check swing and no, he held up on a pitch that missed the inside corner in the count even. Tanner Wells standing in again. And after his first out now hitting just 143 on the year. Next pitch is borderline, but again off the plate. Maybe just a bit high, and the count, two and one. Maybe just a little bit outside as well. Ruled the home plate umpire, Randall Doolin. Time is called, two nothing, high point. Our score, still no word on Panthers starting pitcher, Andrew Godfrey, who had a leave after the first inning. Harrison Smith has pitched two scoreless innings of relief since then. Ding back in from the right side again. It is Wells. John Kruber taking you through this one. Thank you for tuning in along ESPN Plus. High point with a two-run lead in the home half the third. Next pitch is off the plate. Maybe just a little bit high again. And quickly a very, very good hitter's count here for Wells. Three and one. Wells to this point hasn't really displayed power, but he is in a good situation. Three and one. But he waves and misses at that offering and the count back to full, three and two. Looked like he may have surprised him a little bit by mixing it up on that pitch. Wells again digging in from the right side. Bell from the first base side, the full count offering. Struck him out swinging, another good pitch that time. It looked like Wells was really trying to power one. Instead, he swung right over the top of those last two offerings. He is gone on strikes. Two up, two down for high point to start off their home half the third. Two away and nobody on. This will bring the cleanup hitter to the plate, Daniel Milwee. I believe so. Milwee hitting 385 on the season and a slugging percentage of 462. Check swing and he went around on that pitch down and away. So and one. Now make that one and one as the pitch is high and outside and the count even. Sometimes technical issues can play a role in things, especially on an afternoon like this, as the count is even one and one in the bottom of the third. Pitch swung on, hard hit ground ball left side, gets past the third baseman into left field, and so the inning stays alive. It's a two out single that time for Wells. So the Panthers still alive here in the bottom of the third. They have a runner on first, two men out. That took a couple of high hops. It caught the lip of the infield grass right where it meets the dirt on the left side. It took a couple of hops in the third baseman for the Eagles, unable to come up with it. That was Miles Costin, and that allows the Panthers a two-out single. So they have another base runner. Here is Travis Holt coming to the plate right side. First pitch, 
is right over the heart of the plate, right down Broadway, 0-1. For Milwee on the season, now after his last out, still hitting 357 on the year. Meanwhile, taking his lead off first is Holt. Holt definitely does have speed, as does Tanner Wells, the base runner. Next pitch high and away, and the count even. As mentioned, Holt does have speed. He's yet to get a stolen base so far this season, but he's looking for number one and always a threat to get it as Millie stands back in right side. And now they throw back over again, this time no tag. For the Eagles, they're really looking to keep them close. They certainly don't want a gap or anything scoring them except for maybe a round tripper. So they're really trying to keep him back to first as close as they can keep them. It'll be a 1-1 home. Bell getting the sign. He'll look in, come set at the belt. The pitch is swung on and fouled back, and the count now 1-2. and two. In the bottom of the third, 2-0 high point our score. HPU with the two-run single by Trent Harris. In the bottom of the second, that's the difference in the game so far. Taking his lead off first, it's Wells. And Milwee at the plate. The one-two runner goes, it's inside, throw to second, it trickles through on into center field, but not far enough. Wise play that time by the Eagles, as the center fielder Mize was backing him up, so staying at second, but we told you he had speed. So with that, now a base hit certainly will give High Point a three-run edge. And so if you're Brandon Bell, you got to be a little bit defeated now in the sense you did all that work to try to keep him close, and he still swipes second anyway. High point has a runner on second with two men out. It is Millie at the plate. Next pitch is swung on and again gets a piece to stay alive. Fights it off. Count holds. For high point, in the bottom of the third, Dunbar struck out, and then Wells also was retired, so Holtz off second, and Milwee at the plate. From the right side, Hill away a 2-2 offering. Bell ready to go from the first base side of the mound, and now time for Bell. We notice he's a little bit more hesitant when he's working out of the stretch. We saw that in the bottom of the second as well. Seems to be a little bit more deliberate than when he's coming set from the full windup. Next pitch is off the plate, letter high, inside corner. You could tell Bell wanted the call, instead it's fall. Big situation here in the game for the Panthers. Bottom of the third, already up by two. They have a runner on second with two outs and a full count to one of their best hitters, Daniel Milwee. The full count offering is swung on and a sky high pop up, but that's gonna go well foul into the seats. Down the right field side, and the count remains three and two. Home half hitting number three, our score, two nothing high point over North Carolina Central. If Milwee reaches J.J. Woodard, who's also very good with runners in scoring position, he's in the on deck circle. So we'll see how NC Central elects to go here. They may just pitch carefully to Milwee, or they may go after him. 3-2, swung on, hard hit ground ball, one opera left side, fires on to first, in time, and that'll retire the side. But that was a tricky in-between hop that time by the Eagles, but the shortstop Joyce on the first, plenty of time. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on, we're through three on ESPN Plus, 2-0 high point. <laughs> 